Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end.
Good evening. Let us all kneel as we recite the Horatio Imperata for the protection against COVID-19. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Holy Father St. Joseph, Pray for us. St. Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. St. Therese of the Child Jesus, Pray for us. Please be seated. Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the first day of our Novena of Masses in honor of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Over a century has passed since Therese Martin entered into life. For the love of Christ and the salvation of souls, she left a comfortable life in a well-to-do family to bury herself so young in the austere, discalced Carmelite monastery of her town, Lishu. Seed that fell to the ground to disappear before bearing fruit. Quote, to love is to give everything and to give oneself. Unquote, sang Therese. Seemingly, the fallen grain had completed its task, but God alone would know its fruitfulness. By a destiny exceptional in Carmelite history, the seed would spring up in plain sight. During the last months of her illness, Three spoke of a heavenly mission to accomplish a little way, to teach of her desire to help priests and missionaries to make love loved. Ardently, she begged the Lord to choose a legion of souls who would dare believe without hesitation in God's ineffable mercy. In fact, Theresa's influence has been extraordinary and it is far from fading away. During these Novena Masses, may St. Therese continue 
to speak her words of grace to us, bring to greater life the reality and beauty of Him whom she wished to honor in the humility of His childhood and the beauty of His face, radiant with mercy and love. Let us now all stand to welcome our celebrant, Reverend Father Christopher Habal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dearly beloved, today we begin our novena in honor of our patron, St. Therese of the Child Jesus. In this Mass, let us pray that we may learn St. Therese's little way of trust and confidence in the love of God. Let us humbly acknowledge our sins and let us confess our trust in the unfailing mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what, what I have God, done, and in what I have failed to do, through my, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you have promised your kingdom to those who are willing to become like little children. Help us to follow the way of St. Therese with confidence so that by her prayers we may come to know eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koheleth. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. What profit has man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises and the sun goes down. Then it presses on to the place where it rises. 
blowing now toward the south, then toward the north, the wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, yet never does the sea become full. To the place where they go, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing one can say. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear satisfied with hearing. What has been, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no remembrance of the men of old, nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning, they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Hero the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets, has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. We thank the Lord for gathering us together to celebrate our first Mass, our first Novena Mass, in preparation for our solemn celebration of the feast day of our dear Saint Therese. We praise and thank the Lord for giving us the opportunity to come together as a family, to be able to celebrate the Eucharist, to be able to reflect on the life of St. Therese, and to be able to partake of, to be able to ask her intercession for all of us. On a very personal note, I would like to thank the sisters for inviting me to celebrate the Eucharist this first day of the Novena. St. Therese is very dear to me even before I became a priest. As a seminarian, I used to come here to pray and to ask for St. Therese prayers and intercession. Providentially, I was also ordained priest on the feast day of St. Therese. October 1, 2011. My anniversary is on the day we celebrate St. Therese. And I felt that she has accompanied me through the years of priestly ministry. Celebrating the Mass today, I remember that 11 years ago, on the day of our ordination, right after the ordination ceremonies, my first Mass was here on the Feast of St. Therese, concelebrating with Bishop Terona on the Feast of St. Therese, October 1, 2011. So on a very personal note, I would like to thank the sisters for this privilege, for this joy, being given to me to celebrate Mass in honor of St. Therese. I would like to invite you to reflect on the Word of God for today, especially our first reading, and let us try to relate it with the life and example of our dear sister, St. Therese. In our first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, we can relate with the desperation the lack, the meaninglessness of existence as experienced by the author, Kohelet. In the first reading, Kohelet says, Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. What profit has a man from all the labor which he toils under the sun? Vanity of vanities, all things are 
vanity. In our first reading, Kohelet experiences the meaninglessness of one's existence. What is the point of all my labors? What is the point of all my efforts? What is the point of my life? I am alive now, tomorrow I'll be dead. All of my efforts, they are okay now. Tomorrow they can be gone, blown away by the wind. What is the, what is the sense of all this? Looking at the life of St. Therese, this experience, this feeling of restlessness, this feeling of meaninglessness, this feeling of wanting to grasp the sense of life in the midst of many changes, many transitions in life. This, is, this experience is, not some, is, is familiar with St. Therese, especially towards the end of her life. When she was sick, when her beloved father died, Therese too struggled with this feeling of senselessness, meaninglessness, drudgery of human existence. Naranasan din po ni St. Therese ang paghahanap ng katuturan, ng kahulugan sa ating pagsusumikap, sa ating pagpapagod, naghahanap ng kahulugan sa ating buhay. Katulad ng sa unang pagbasa, naranasan ni St. Therese ang magtanong, ano nga bang kahulugan ng lahat ng ito? Reflecting on the life of St. Therese, we can find the answer. We can find the medicine, if we may call it, the medicine to this sense of meaninglessness. Ano bang lunas? sa parabang kawalan ng kahulugan ng buhay. St. Therese gives us the medicine. St. Therese teach us, teaches us the way. First, St. Therese found meaning in seeming meaninglessness in love. At one point in her life, it dawned on her that her vocation is love. That if she loves, she would accomplish great things, even in the simplicity, even in the ordinariness, in the hiddenness of her life in, the, in, the, in Carmel. If she understood that if she puts love into whatever she does, love will give meaning even to the most tiring, senseless, meaningless toil of existence. So looking at Therese, we can learn that it is love that gives meaning. It is love that gives purpose. It is love that gives contentment in what we do. Natututunan ho natin kay St. Therese, na ang kahulugan pala ng buhay ay matatagpuan lamang sa pagmamahal. At ang nagmamahal, kahit simple ang buhay, may kahulugan ang mga ginagawa, ang mga pagsusumikap na ginagawa sa diwa ng pagmamahal. What is the medicine to this feeling of meaninglessness? If we ask St. Therese, she would say, put love. If you put love, there is meaning. Even in the simplest things we do, day in, day out. Holiness consists not so much in doing extraordinary things, says St. Therese. Holiness consists in doing ordinary things, plain things, but with great love. If we put love 
in everything that we do, no matter how simple it may be, no matter how hidden it may be, it is meaningful. It can fill our hearts with joy. It can fill our hearts with meaning. So the secret to a meaningful life, according to St. Therese, is when we put love. Put love in everything. When you experience difficulties, sufferings, when the cross becomes real to us, put love. And you will see the meaning of life. When life becomes too boring because it is repeated, ordinary, put love. And even the little things that we do will be special. Another medicine we can learn from St. Therese against this meaningless existence is God. God. In our responsorial song, we say, In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. At every passing of time, at every passing of generation from generation, Lord, you have been our refuge. In the passing of time, we see that many things changes. Many things passes away. But God alone stays. God alone is the sure anchor of our life amidst these many vanities, many emptiness in our day-to-day -day existence. So what is the secret? What is the medicine to this meaninglessness? If we find ourselves in God. That is why the little way of St. Therese consists in trusting confidence in God. I put my trust in God. No matter what happens in and around me, my confidence is in God. God is the sure anchor in which my life will have stability in the midst of many changes, in the midst of many things that pass away. So if we have God, if we have God, if we relate with God, if we have a relationship with God, if we put our trust and confidence in Him, we can stand firm in the midst of the vanities, the emptiness of human existence. St. Therese, being a true, a, true doc, a true daughter of St. Teresa of Avila, we can apply to her the poem composed by St. Teresa, let nothing, let nothing disturb thee, let nothing affright thee, all things are passing. God alone never changes. He who has God has everything. Patient endurance attain all things. God alone suffices. In the midst of many vanities of life, we learn from St. Therese that God alone suffices. Material, material things, money, our good looks, our good health, all of this will pass away. One thing will not pass away, God. If we put our trust in God, we can stand the test of time. We can stand the vanities, the emptiness that may come our way. So this too, the experience of Kohelet was the experience of St. Therese, and maybe this is the experience of many of us too. Every day we struggle, what is the meaning of life? What is the point of all my efforts? What is the sense of all this? Let us learn from St. Therese to respond to this longing for meaning by putting love 
in all that we do, and by putting our confidence, sure confidence in God. Finally, to close, I would like to add one point for our reflection. St. Therese entered Carmel for two reasons. She said she would be entering Carmel first to pray for priests, and second, to pray for salvation of souls. I would like to end this last point about St. Therese's love for priests. I am in the seminary, I am assigned in the seminary, one of my ministry, my ministry is to accompany our young men towards the priesthood. And I take consolation in St. Therese's love for priests. We as devotees of St. Therese must also learn that value, love for priests. St. Therese offered her life in Carmel for the holiness of priests. So in this first day of the Novena, let us pray for our priests. Let us pray for many vocations to the priesthood. Let us love what Therese loved, the priesthood. Let us pray especially for priests who may be undergoing difficulties in their vocation. Let us pray for many holy priests among us priest who will guide us, who will teach us how to love and how to put our trust in God. May the example of St. Therese not only inspire us, but help us in the little way. May the, the prayers of St. Therese sustain us in our own life of holiness. Amen. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes speaks of the many burdens of life which spur us today to pray for those who feel depressed and dis discouraged. Aware of our weakness, we call to the Father through the intercession of St. Therese that He will guide and strengthen us. In every petition, let us say, Lord, You have been our refuge from age to age. Listen and grant our prayer. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. That the spirit of St. John the Baptist and Elijah and all the prophets may be at work in the church, pointing unfailingly to the one who surpasses and completes them all, Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For political candidates and leaders of nations may have the biblical perspective to see through illusions of power and fame to the lasting reality of service to the cause of human dignity and world peace. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For those who have strayed from the path that leads to life may be given the grace to rediscover the joy of walking once more in the footsteps of Christ. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For those who are called to the consecrated life, may they be faithful witnesses of God's love 
May others be inspired to live their baptismal commitment by professing the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, especially in the Tertian Carmelite way of life. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For all those who are suffering, particularly those afflicted with the COVID-19, all the sick and the dying, may find strength in patience, in silence, and in hope. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For all the intentions confided to our prayers, for those who are present here with us tonight, and for those who are following us online, may the Lord hear our petitions in accordance to His holy will. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. For our beloved dead, whose remembrance we hold in our hearts, that our prayer for them may speed their entry into the kingdom where God will make all things new. We pray. Lord, you have been our refuge from every age. Listen and grant our prayer. Lord God, in the shortness of our lives, give us wisdom of heart so that we can rejoice in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We praise the wonder of your grace in St. Therese. Lord, as you were pleased with the witness she offered, be pleased also to accept this service of ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and just. It, it, is, it is truly right, all-powerful Father and ever-living God, that we always and everywhere give you thanks. You reveal the secrets of your kingdom to those who become like little children. Among them, you chose St. Therese, hidden in Christ, to proclaim the good news of your merciful love. Your Holy Spirit moved her to make her life a living oblation of prayer and self-denial for the salvation of all mankind through Christ and His Church. Now with the saints and all angels, we praise you forever. Praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese, and with all the saints, on a constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With childlike confidence and trust in the love of God for us, let us pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, by the power of your love, St. Therese offered herself completely to you and prayed for the salvation of all mankind. May the sacraments we have received fill us with love and bring us forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all kneel as we recite the Novena Prayer to St. Therese. O little Therese of the child Jesus, who during your short life on earth became a mirror of angelic purity, of love strong as death, and of wholehearted abandonment to God. Now that you rejoice in the reward of your virtues, cast a glance of pity on us as we leave all things in your hands. Make our troubles your own. Speak a word for us to Our Lady Immaculate, whose flower of special love you were, to that Queen of Heaven who smiled on you at the dawn of your life. Beg her as Queen of the Heart of Jesus to obtain for us, by her powerful intercession, the grace we yearn for so ardently at this moment, and that she join it with the blessing that may strengthen us during life, defend us at the hour of our death, and lead us straight to a happy eternity. Amen. Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, pray for us. Please be seated for a short announcement. Dear brothers and sisters, after the final blessing, the relic of St. Therese will be exposed in front of the altar for veneration. We shall form a line in the middle aisle and exit at the left front door. There will be no kissing of the relic due to the COVID pandemic. We can make a slight bowing after our brief prayer. Thank you. Let us all stand. Two lessons from St. Therese against meaninglessness. Number one, put love. If we put love, there will be meaning. And second, trust in God, abandoning ourselves in the fatherly love of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing and protection of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.